Hey everybody, welcome back. This is sample clean code, sample of clean code structure, and it's in testing for module two inside of the prep course that we've been in the whole time. Uh, so one of the things you're going to notice is that assert, this function right here, is not the same as assert equal, assert raise equal, or any of the other ones we've done so far. Um, and that's not that big of a deal, because the idea that we want to start uh, gravitating towards is that there are two to three stages of writing code for the rest of this prep course. Write the code, write a test function, use the test function to verify that the code works. And as you can see, there's, there's, those are the three sections we have here. Function definition, an assertion function to use, usually based on the return value of the function you're testing, and then a couple of tests, which is to say calls to our assertion function and, and um, and in doing so, we can kind of prove that add one works as it should. Now, let's go over to Replit. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on JavaScript, and it'll give us kind of like a free uh, place to code without really having to log in first. It's going to take a while. And I'm not sure why. I think that's my internet. And change the theme to dark. And in case you were curious why I changed the theme to dark, I used to not have a reason, but I heard recently it has something to do with like the aperture or the focus of your eye for dark backgrounds versus light backgrounds. Um, I don't know anything more than that, but that's my story so far. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab all of this code. We'll paste it into Replit. You can see how one of the things that we're going to start to consider as a, as a portion of what we evaluate our code on is not just if the code works, but if it's easy for us or somebody else to notice if the code works. So when we look at this, it's a lot easier to be able to tell that this code works because of the assertion function we included. Oh, also, real quick, uh, previously we had an assertion function that was assert equal, and it had an actual and an expected value, uh, and then a test name as the parameters. This one has something called a condition, and you've actually seen this before. And, and on line 17 and, nine, and line 17 and 20, we're going to see where we're actually comparing, <clears throat> excuse me, the actual result, which in this case is line 16. It says variable result one is equal to the result of add one called with an argument of one. So that is theoretically our actual result, this result one uh, variable. Instead of creating an expected variable and having the expected and the actual like go into the function, the assertion function as arguments separately, we actually make the first argument, which is gonna stand in for this condition parameter, a comparison between the actual and the expected. <clears throat> It's like, why is this different, or why is it better? Better, meh, different, yes. And so the idea at this point is we're going to start learning about things that are going to give you the ability to parse code that other people have written. Because there's so many different ways to write code, the more ways that you understand about writing code, the better off you're going to be. And to that point, if you ever look up an answer <clears throat> and it features something you're not sure how it works, try to mess with it for a little while. Now, if you're unable to, that's fine, because the next time that you see it, you'll have at least taken a crack at it. However, if you're able to parse the way code works by pasting it into a replit or something like this and experimenting with it a few times, it, it's, it's just a good habit to get into. So what we've done is we've called assert, this function we wrote, with a condition, which is to say result one is equal to two, which is to say strictly equal to two. Now this is gonna be either true or false. So if the condition is either true or false, if it's true, meaning that result one is equal to the expected value, which in this case is just the value two, then we're going to console.log passed. And I got lazy when writing this, so instead of actually... Oh, that's the other thing, is that in addition to... This actually isn't a lazy thing. This is more like, because we did the condition, we're not going to be able to log the expected and the actual values to the console. Now, maybe we could log the condition, but to be sure, that's pretty much just going to log true or false. So this is just in another assertion function. I don't think it's as good, but it might come up on the interview, and so you want to have an idea that you could pass into an assertion function a comparison as opposed to two variables or parameters that will be compared. So back to the clean code structure. Uh, one of the things I want you to take note of is the spacing. See how there's a nice space in between each one of these? There are comments about when the function definitions are, where the assertion functions we're going to use are, and then the tests. And it just kind of looks pleasant. Everything is indented nicely. This if statement starts here, so the indentation for the close of the if statement is also two spaces. Now, Replit does a lot of this for you. But in general, consistency is key. If you want to do four spaces, if you want to do a different structure, that's probably okay. In general, though, the more consistent you are with your code structure, the easier it'll be to work with you. And oddly enough, the more, the more easily 
how do you say this? It will be much easier for you to return to code you wrote previously, let's say six months ago, and understand quickly what's going on there. So let's go ahead and run this and see if there are any mistakes. So we got passed and failed. Which I think was the idea, right? Pass, add one, negative one, should return result of a negative input number added to one. So that's the failure message and that's the passing message. So you might notice that it's not as good of a message uh, as the assert uh, equal function because we don't see what the input, uh, what the actual and the expected values are. But here are two versions of it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So for the rest of this, you're going to want to consider that in addition to writing some code, the code here will probably be either given to you or given to you with errors. So what you do is you're going to write an assertion function based on whatever, well, for the, for the next couple in the testing, the assertion function will be obvious. Later on, the assertion function will be something that you'll need to figure out for yourself and also possibly build a custom assertion function. And we'll get into that later. And so the thing that we would need to change here would be negative two plus one is going to be negative one. So if we change that and we run this, then they'll both pass. Now the idea here is not to have, um, not necessarily to make sure that all the code works or to do anything really with this. This is much more, as the title says, a sample of clean code structure. So make sure that you read all of this and get ready to move into the next lessons. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.